In 2010, I went on what would become the most epic journey of my lifetime. It was to be 11 days alone in silence, exploring uncharted waters, tumultuous landscapes, all with no real end goal in mind other than to observe the vast inner space between here and here. <laughs> Fellow Toastmasters and welcome guests, I endured a Vipassana meditation retreat in the ever exotic Roanoke, Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just tell you, the four and a half hour drive from DC was already an emotional roller coaster. <laughs> there was sudden and ridiculous road rage, a wicked hailstorm, whap, whap, whap. And then, of course, severe FOMO beginning to set in. And then, out of nowhere, as if to mock me, this magnificent rainbow painted itself across my rear view mirror. Which of course made me cry because I saw it as a sign. <laughs> After all that, when I arrived, I was so disappointed there was no pomp and circumstance, no warm welcome, not even a single helium balloon. <laughs> if it weren't for the tiny little registration sign next to the door, I might have just kept on driving. <laughs> But I just got off the phone with my wife, then girlfriend, and she'd said it. I'm proud of you, babe. When I finally mustered up enough courage to go inside, I left all my belongings in the car, of course. I went in and I was greeted warmly by Mary, the kind volunteer. She gave me the rundown of what I was to expect and tried to make me feel a little bit more at home. That is, until she offered to take my phone and my keys for the duration of the trip. <laughs> Thankfully, I still had to park my getaway car, so I told her I'd be back. <laughs> there was nothing to be desired about this place. There was a broken chain link fence, sludge in the bottom of the now empty swimming pool, the smell of 13-year-old boys still lingering in the camp bunks. <laughs> If it weren't for the solid year of self-discovery behind me, I not, might have not even made it this far. I had come into this practice of meditation, kicking and screaming as it was. And yet I kept coming back to this mantra, one that I actually had stolen from Jim Carrey. Life doesn't happen to you, it happens for you. One that I would say dozens and dozens of times in order to endure the next 11 days. Because let me just tell you, for the first three days, all we did was breathe. <laughs> Can you believe that? <laughs> 30 hours of breathing, we focused our attention on this tiny little triangle below our nostrils and above our upper lip. With the intention to hone our awareness, allowing any sensations to arise without judgment. Heatness, coolness, vibrations, pulsations, focus, steady, awareness. Look, buddy, I was up at 4 a.m. I don't know about you, but everything on my body hurts right now. They only fed me twice yesterday, and I haven't had breakfast this morning. So there is no more focus. <laughs> Life happens to you. It doesn't happen for you. I buy myself another minute. In this space of no escape, I'm reminded of every hurt, every regret, every hope, every lasting desire. Fear and resistance intensifies every bit of pain caused by hours and hours of unnerving stillness. Silence echoes back to me the familiar terror. I can't do this. It's just too hard. And yet when I go to the pain, it dissipates. When I breathe into the fear, it dissolves. And I'm reminded of my mantra. Life happens for you. The year prior had already been its own triumph of torment. I'd forgiven a big offender, and most importantly, myself. 
and in so doing, I had let go a lifetime of victimhood. This here, this camp, this was the championship. This was the main event. I was here to clinch the title, ultimate freedom. And yet, it's day five. We <laughs> <laughs> only halfway. It feels like a smack in the face. This excavation of emotions crap is no longer cute. Here I am clenching my teeth and sweating through t-shirts and everybody else around me appears to be floating through poppies. <laughs> and yet somehow I make it. Somehow I survive. Day 11, I have this lightness and brightness and expansiveness about me I can't even describe. I felt untouchable like I just run the most grueling of all marathons. I get in my car giddy driving down the road. I head south on the freeway as anybody would after being in 11 days in, in the mountains. Suddenly I see signs for Tennessee after two hours and three phone conversations later. Oh no, no, please, no. I lose it. I lose every bit of zen I tape to myself flying out the window with tears and snot and all this swappiness of self-pity. I call my wife. Babe, honey, you won't believe this. Honey, why, why does this always have to happen to me? She's chuckling on the other end of the line. Babe, did you hear me? She says, sweetie, life doesn't happen to you. It happens for you. <laughs> Thank you.